friends, my name is Shayla and today I am here to film my first February wrap up for the month of February 2019. So typically I split them up into two when I've read a lot. This wrap up is going to be quite excessive as I gave myself kind of this low key goal in February to read 28 novels and 28 volumes of manga. So there's been a lot of reading going on so far in February and with contemporary a -thon and the 24 hour manga love readathon that lended to quite a bit of reading as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the ebooks and then I'm going to move on to the novels and then I will move on to the manga. The manga will all be at the end. Anything that I read during the 24 hour manga love readathon, I will just briefly mention. If you want more detailed thoughts, I will leave my Goodreads linked down below as well as the vlog for that day so you can check that out. And again, with the contemporary athon reads, I won't go too deeply into those because the playlist for all of the contemporary athon vlogs will also be linked down below. So if you're looking for more details on any of those, feel free to check out Goodreads or the vlogs because I'm going to try to keep this as short as humanly possible. All right, so the first one I'm going to mention here is Fierce Justice. I did read this during contemporary athon. This is a story about a behind the scenes kind of security investigation group that is exploring a human trafficking ring and there's a romance that buds between two people who are working together. This is a romance sent to me as a NetGalley arc by my friends at Forever Romance. This was a really fun, enjoyable read. I thoroughly enjoyed the coupling and I really liked how they delved into this human trafficking ring. And this is further on in the series, so I know there were previous books, and I do want to go back and read those because I think it involves kind of the same thing. So I really enjoyed that. The next one I will mention here is Writer by Diana Garden. This is, again, a romance novel in which we're dealing with a private security guard who is a former member of a Delta squad for the military taking care of a woman who has left an abusive marriage and needs protection because this guy continues to come after her over and over and over again. This book rocked my heart. Having left an abusive situation myself, I definitely related to a lot of the things our female character was feeling in this particular novel, and it was so well written. Again, I read this for contemporary a -thon, so check everything out down below. All right, the next one here is a fun Tessa Dare novella, and that is Beauty and the Blacksmith. This is from the Spindle Cove novella series. This was just really fun. It didn't really have Beauty and the Beast elements, so don't go into it expecting that. But this was just a really fun little romance, little historical romance, Bodice Ripper, the smut's good. I really thoroughly enjoyed it, so definitely check that one out. The next one was a huge surprise. I totally picked it up on a whim. But it is called Bridal Pact by Leora Gonzalez. This is alien smut, people. <laughs> no extra body parts or anything, nothing weird. But it's about this race of aliens who are dominantly male. Their females have been dying out and so breeding hasn't been happening because they've been cloning to try to substitute. And so they've come to make a pact with Earth so to get human brides. And so this is about how one young lady who's kind of down on her luck in life, decides to sign up for this because why the heck not, who ends up getting paired with a, a man from the political side of things, and things move from there. It is so good. I went and purchased the rest of the series after finishing this, so you will be seeing this series crop up in wrap-ups for the next little while. Oh lordy, I loved this. So good. Oh my gosh. Much more than I should have. We'll just put it that way. The next one we're going to talk about is The Scandalous, Dissolute, No Good, Mr. Right. Again, this is a Tessa Dare novella. I don't think this one's a Spindle Cove one. Yes, not from the Spindle Cove series, but it is a Tessa Dare novella. So again, about 100 pages. There's usually one really good smut scene throughout these because they need to build the characters a little bit. It's really fun. It's really cute. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Check it out. All right, friends, so that is it for all of the ebooks that I've read so far this month. Again, I told you there's been lots of reading and lots of enjoyment. 
I've been a very happy reader. So let's go ahead and dig into the physical novels. I'm gonna start with a stack that is not related to Contemporary-a-thon, and then I will go through the Contemporary-a-thon. So the first one I'm gonna mention is Throne of Jade. This is the second book in the Temerary series by Naomi Novik. This is essentially the Napoleonic War with dragons, and we're following one particular man who, in the first novel, is put in a situation where a dragon egg is on board his ship, and he knows that he has to take care of it, and the dragon ends up bonding with him, and so they begin to go on their missions for his majesty and to go and serve in the Napoleonic War with his dragon companion, Temerer. So these are really fun. I really enjoyed the second installment in the series. I do plan on continuing on. So if you have not checked out the first book in this series, His Majesty's Dragon, I do suggest picking up the series as a whole because it is really fun. Alrighty, next up we have the next three novels in the Dark Hunter series. So first we have Time on Time, and then we have Styx, which again, like Acheron, stole my heart. Oh good lordy. Styx is one of my new favorite characters in this whole entire series. Oh goodness. A thousand page brick, so good. And then Son of No One. You guys know I love this Dark Hunter series and that I am a eternal trash can for these books. Um, I definitely, sticks. I ended up enjoying much more than I originally thought I would. I didn't think anything could top Asheron. And then I got to know my baby boy Styx, and he is my precious child, and I love him, and he deserves the world. But all of these books, all the couplings were great. Kenyon's writing continues to come through and just make me happy. If you have not checked out this long-running series, I'm still working my way through it, definitely check it out. And then we have two books from the same Highlander romance series. These are from the Highlander Heirs series by Paula Quinn. We have Laird of the Black Isle and The Scots Bride. I thoroughly enjoyed both of these. How Paula Quinn writes Highlander, I really enjoy. I don't like how everyone writes Highlander. There was one that I read in January that I didn't love quite as much. But Paula Quinn tends to do Highlander right by my opinion. Consent lines are crystal clear through this series, and everything is so good. These boys are so good to the women, like it's a cultural thing for these Highlanders, and I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. I will continue to gather the books in this series because I need to read them all. So anyways, I thoroughly enjoyed both of these. Definitely check out the series if you have any interest at all. Next we have A Scott in the Dark by Sarah McLean. This is book two in the Scandal and Scoundrel series. I really like Sarah McLean's writing. This was really fun. This involves a young woman who has basically been left to fend for herself, hasn't really had a season in society or anything, ends up falling in love with this artist and poses nude for him. He says he, it's only for his eyes and that no one will ever see it. And of course he wants to make it public. And her distant person taking care of her, I forget the term, this man, she is his ward, I guess is how you would terminology that. Historical romances, I forget the terminology sometimes. But anyways, the man is a duke in charge of her, and he lives far away in Scotland because he doesn't want to deal with England society at all. Finds out that she's in trouble, and he comes down to kind of save the day, and that's where this all begins. And it's just a fun romp. I, again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Definitely check it out. And the last one on this stack, not related to contemporary thon, is 96 Words for Love by Rachel Roy and Ava Dash. Now, this is a mother-daughter combo, and the daughter is actually here on the cover. So, in this story, we're following some Indian mythology, and essentially, this has kind of an eat, pray, love feel to it, in which... This girl has Indian heritage, her grandmother passes away, and this grandmother says that I've left this, I've left things for you at this place, which is basically like where people go to pray, ashram, that's the term. At this ashram, she's left things for her and her cousin that she thinks are important. And so her and her cousin voyage to, the summer after their senior year, they voyage to this ashram to go and spend time. And of course, she meets a boy there and things begin to ensue. There is mystery, there is intrigue, there is a lot going on in this novel. Now, this was not the best novel ever written, and I will never say that, 
But I thoroughly enjoyed my read of this. It was a quick read. It was fast. It was engaging. I ended up giving this book 3.54 stars. I haven't really settled on it. But I did enjoy it. I liked our characters well enough. There were some plot points that I didn't really enjoy. But I will be getting into more details with that over on April's channel on Sunday as we will be doing the Tell It Again live show. And again, her channel will be linked down below, so make sure you're following her so that you can hear us discuss 96 Words for Love on Sunday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Hey friends, Editing Shay here. So I've been thinking about this book since I filmed this wrap-up a few days ago. If I'm honest, the rating is more like a flat-out three-star. It really wasn't that great. If you want to know more details, come watch the live show. I know April didn't enjoy it that much either. We're going to kind of have a discussion about young adult contemporary books, I'm sure, as we discuss this book. But yes, that's essentially what's going on there. So I just had to give you guys my full and honest thoughts. Back to edited Shay. I know it's 4 p.m. Central, so like 5 p.m. East Coast, 2 p.m. West Coast is what I want to say. I don't know. I'm doing two different live shows Sunday, so... Anyways, this is the second live show I will be on on Sunday. But, yes, if you want more of my spoilery kind of thoughts about the book, we'll definitely talk about it then. And then the three physical novels that I read during contemporary Athon were The Cowboy Next Door by R.C. Ryan, Comics Will Break Your Heart by Faith Erin Hicks, and Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. Again, if you want my full thoughts on these, feel free to check out the Goodreads reviews or you can check out the vlogs from contemporary -athon. Essentially, I gave them three, 3.5, and four stars. If you want to know the details as to why, definitely check out those other videos. All right, let's dig into the manga, friends. Again, I hope you will all stick around. I know this has been a long one already, but I promise I read a lot of amazing stuff. So let's quickly run through the stack that I read for the 24-hour Manga Love Readathon. Again, Goodreads and the vlog will be linked down below, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these. The Aromatic Bitters by Erika Sakurazawa, which I gave three stars. The Demon Prince of Emochi House Volume 3 by Aya Shoto, which I gave four stars. Say I Love You Volume 1 by Kane Hazuki, which I gave five stars. Honey So Sweet Volume 1 by Amu Meguro, which I ended up giving five stars. Maybe four stars, I don't remember. Check Goodreads for that. Horimiya Volume 1 by Hiro and Daisuke Hajiwara, which I ended up giving five stars. My Love Story Volume 1 by Kazune Hara, Hawahara and Aruko, which I ended up giving five stars. Kamisama Kiss Volume 5 and Volume 6 by Juliet Suzuki, and I gave each of these 4.5 stars. Ayo Horror Ride Volume 3 by Ayo Sakisaka, which I ended up giving five stars. Shortcake Cake Volume 3 by Sue Morishita, which I ended up giving four stars. Takane and Hana Volume 7 by Yuki Shiwasu, again, Japanese names, guys, sorry, which I ended up giving five stars. Probably my favorite volume in the entire series so far. LDK Volume 4 by Ayu Watanabe, which I ended up giving four stars. Yona of the Dawn Volume 1, which I ended up giving five stars. Moteki Love Strikes Omnibus Number 2, which I ended up giving two stars. Again, if you want to know more details about any of that, the 24-hour Manga Love Readathon vlog is linked down below. Now I have these small stack of things that I read during Contemporary Athon. There are five volumes of manga here that I read during Contemporary Athon. So the first one being Honey, S not Honey So Sweet, my Love Story Volume 2, which I ended up giving 5 stars. Honey So Sweet Volume 2, which I ended up giving 4.5 stars. Horamiya Volume 2, which I ended up giving 5 stars. Say I Love You Volume 2, which I ended up giving 4.5 stars. And Tokyo Terror Rainbow Girls Volume 4, which I ended up giving 5 stars. This is by Akiko Higashimura. And this is probably my favorite volume thus far in the series. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the six other volumes of manga that I read, not associated with either of the readathons. I know, guys, I read a ton. I'm so sorry. So the first one being Aohara Ride Volume 2. You guys know I love this high school shoujo, and I ended up giving this one 4.5 stars. I absolutely adore it. One of my favorite scenes from the anime takes place in this particular volume, so it was a really fun one for me. Eden Zero Volume 2 by Hiro Mashimura. Mashima, sorry. This is the creator of Fairy Tale. This is his new series that's publishing right now. This deals more with space and vlogging, and it's a really fun ride. 
I really enjoyed this second installment and I gave it four stars. The next one is As Miss Beelzebub Likes Volume 1. This is a fun little series about Beelzebub here who, though she is dark and terrifying, craves all the fluffy things and this is about her assistant and how he feels about working for Miss Beelzebub. And it's really fun, it's really sweet. The humor's along the same lines as Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. It's just really sweet, it's really fun. I suggest picking it up. There is a little bit of fan service, so if you don't like fan service, beware, but it didn't bother me too much in this one. Next we have Caterpillar Girl and Bad Texture Boy. I ended up giving this one three stars. This was just super average. I don't love certain parts of this. I don't hate it. This is just a one shot, so there's not multiple volumes or anything. But I feel like they could have done a whole lot more with this story than what they did. And it just kind of left me feeling meh at the end. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. So right in the middle out of three. And then we have Your Lion April Volume 3. This is about two teenagers in the music world as they are prodigies and their relationships that they form with them and other schoolmates. It's just really fun. The art is beautiful. The anime is beautiful and musically it's fantastic. But yes, this I'm continuing to work my way through this series as I collect it. It's beautiful. I will never get enough of your lie in April. And last but not least, I know this wrap up has been crazy long for a half month wrap up and I've read a ton, but this is my reality at this point, people. And that is again, volume four. This is from the same creator as Yuri on Ice and actually the same creator as Moteki. But this story I really enjoy. I feel like this doesn't dwell on stupid romantic plots. There's a lot more to this. This is essentially about a high schooler who, through an accident, ends up getting sent back in time to his first day of high school to kind of do it over again and to change things because as he went through high school, he didn't really amount to much. He didn't really connect with anybody. And so this is just kind of the reper repercussions of him going back in time and starting over. So it's really fun. It's a really interesting, intriguing series. I definitely recommend reading again. I thought it was fantastic. This, in all of its glory, is what I've read since the 1st of February. So guys, that is it. That is everything that I've read so far this month. I know it is a crap ton of stuff. It is so much stuff, it's not even funny. So thanks again for watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you made it to the end and you're a champ if you did. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <music>